stewardship. We have um, taken a break from Luke, and we're going to pick Luke back up uh, in January. Um, and so we started this series, um, and one of the things I recognize um, about stewardship is that oftentimes the conversation, um, at least that I have heard about stewardship, kind of falls into two kind of categories. It's all about giving financially, and it's all about church giving. And oftentimes stewardship just kind of falls in that category. And, I, and I've seen um, sermons that, I mean, you know, I've seen pastors do weeks on that. Um, and, you know, and there's a lot of good things to talk about, but I think what happens is when we think about stewardship is that we take this great, big, wonderful idea and when then we kind of overly condense it. And so last week, I talked briefly about one thing that I think that we often overlook, we often don't talk about, and that's um, stewardship and self-care, caring for your own well-being, right? We can push a lot about helping other people, and that's really good. That's, that's one of the calls that Christ has on our life. Um, we can call about you know, giving to others or giving to the church, and I think those are important things. But there is a, a important part of the Christian life um, that's concerned with taking care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are made in the image of God. We have value. Christ has paid with his life so that we could have life. And so our life matters, not only for ourselves, but then we become a way in which people encounter the living God in us. So last week we talked briefly about this idea of stewarding ourselves and the importance of being stewards with our money. But also that stewardship involves and entails a lot more than just money. Stewardship involves the caring of your mental health and your, your emotional well-being. It involves spirit, taking care of your spiritual well-being. Right? All these matter. And, and there's other nuanced things that we can talk about in your life. But there's a there's a, a big sense in which caring for yourself is important. And, I, and even if I just preached one, once, I didn't want to overlook that. Um, this week, I, I want to move us a little bit farther back. And I want us to think about stewardship of the church. The word for church in the New Testament is ecclesia. It represents the people who were called by Jesus. It was the group of people that were empowered by the Spirit of God in Acts chapter 2, which we remember as Pentecost. The historical and biblical witness is that the Christian, the Christian life is lived in and through the church. As far as the New Testament is concerned, there is no lone wolf Christian. I think oftentimes when we um, when we talk about the church, there's this kind of surface level um, misconception, and maybe this is a misconception that you have, but this is certainly a misconception in our culture of what the church really is. We might hear a phrase all the time, or we might even use it: "I'm going to church." But the church isn't a building. Many churches do have buildings. They have facilities, but the church isn't a building. The church isn't a time either. It's not something that we do once or twice a week. The church is the community of believers. It's a transformed people. There's a pastor's phone going off. It's not one of your guys's. We don't go to church. We are the church. In light of this, to really understand what being a good steward means, we must ask the question, then what is the church, what is the community of believers here for? And there's three important elements that, broadly speaking, I want to cover this with. Firstly, the church exists to worship. Remember that worshiping means a lot more than just singing. Worshiping God is a way of life. 
To worship, to glorify, literally means to reflect. It's how we honor, respect, and reflect God in our life and participate in his kingdom work. We were made to know God and love God and be known and by love and be loved by God. The outflow of this worship is that we care for what God cares about. The church exists then to live out God's kingdom in a broken world. We are the embodiment of the Lord's prayer, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Finally, these things are all accomplished by the formation of our faith in Christ. The church isn't a place where you just come to learn or sing about God. The church is the community in which we are built up into the transformed people that Christ has freed. This is a community in which God uses to change our character. So what do we have then? The church has an identity rooted in the crucified and resurrected Jesus Christ. It thus has his kingdom mission. It's because of the significance and importance of the task before us that the church happens to have stuff. The church has to go to the ends of the world and proclaim the good news of Jesus to announce the kingdom of God. So we have buildings and sanctuaries, church buildings, gyms, and we have all kinds of other things. They all exist so we can follow Jesus' leading. So the church isn't defined by what it has, but what it does with what it has. So last week we saw how stewardship is a biblical concept that charges us to care for all creation, including ourselves. Here, the church has a specific task to manage its own resources. But before we go into that, I think, and what it means for the church to be good stewards, I think that there's a much needed caveat. Imagine a farmer. And imagine that farmer is taking care of his equipment, like his trucks or his tractors or his harvesters. His equipment is an important and essential so he can do his job, so he can farm. He should care for and be responsible with what he has. If he doesn't, the farm, what he grows, his livelihood, everything would suffer if he doesn't steward well. Yet it would be absurdly crazy if he became so obsessed about the gear, his tools, that he forgets to use it. Its value comes from what it does. He stewards his equipment not because it has an innate value, but because it aids him in his livelihood. You might already see where this is going. The church has our resources, our buildings, our sanctuaries. They're all tools, assets to worship God to aid in our kingdom calling, and to help in the formation of our faith. In the kingdom sense, however, they have no value beyond what they do. We should be careful that the church, we should be careful that what the church has does not become an idol. Some churches worship their building at the cost of obedient kingdom living. Some churches are more concerned about their church building looking a certain way or being comfortable than, li than living the way that God has called them to. I can't help but draw the comparison to Jesus' parable in Matthew chapter 25 about a servant who is given money to invest it and make more, but instead he hides it out of fear. Remember that our tools and our resources are just that, tools and resources. So the question, then, is how does the church steward not only its resources, but the community itself? This conversation always seems to start and end with tithing. In the Old Testament, tithing was the way the Jewish community would support the temple and priestly community. It was the way in which people understood that everything was God's, and they were giving back to God. Notice that in the New Testament, Sacrificial giving and generosity are massively important concepts, but tithing 
isn't really specifically mentioned. This practice has been carried by the church and become the principle that most churches use in giving. On a practical level, I think that there's something helpful to work with when I'm trying to figure out how much to give. But remember Paul's words in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 6 through 8. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. Not reluctantly or not under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly. So that in all things and at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. And with that, and with giving, there's a few things that God's laid on my heart that I want us to be careful of. Firstly, be careful of the mentality of tithing and giving as some sort of legalism. We don't give, or we should not give, out of a sense of legalism. We don't give as a way to earn anything. We don't give so that we have a lifestyle of generosity that makes us worthy of God's grace or anything else. We're not trying to earn anything. It's not a membership to a social club. We are a people, redeemed and justified and sanctified, and thus we give ourselves back to the God who has poured out his very life for us. The Christian witness is that everything that I am and everything that I have is Christ and for God's kingdom already. Secondly, be careful of the mentality that has a transactional spirit of giving. I've seen traces of this in many different ways, but something to the effect of, I've given God my ten, so I've done my part. As if the community of faith is reduced to some kind of social service. Worship becomes not about a way of life, but something to consume. Our, our culture loves to consume and be entertained. We like our food fast, and we like it exactly the way we want it. When we order something online, we don't even have to leave our home when it comes to us in two days. Or it should come to us in two days. We are able to endlessly entertain ourselves in the palm of our hands. And these attitudes and behaviors have in some times and in some places seeped into the church. We often have this mentality of worship as well. People think that church is something that you just come to every week. Some people will rate their service on how well they were entertained. And if they don't like it, then they'll just leave. This goes hand in hand with the idea that church exists purely to serve me. What do I get out of it? The focus is taken off God, off of the calling of Jesus, or the moving of the Spirit. We become the focus, and God gets the leftovers. People who give God the leftover crumbs of their life have a crummy faith. This this then should make us aware that stewardship, about caring for the church, about caring for the community, about caring for our resources and all of its well-being, entails far more than just money and giving. Being good stewards of what the church has, and far more importantly, caring for the community itself, means that we are giving our time, that we are participating that we are giving our talents and our passion and our heart. Paul writes in Romans 12, 1 through 8. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, perfect will. Humble service in the body of Christ. For by grace given to me, I say to every one of you, 
Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith that God has distributed in each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ, though many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others, we all have different gifts, according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then encourage. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Have you ever been somewhere with a really good view? I used to hike all the time. I used to love hiking, and I have kids. A really good excuse to be lazy and stay home and not do anything. <laughs> um, but there's something about hiking, especially if you go up to a place really, really high up. You get a view. And you're not just getting a view of like a mountain or a, a river or a valley or some trees. When you take the view in, you're getting the whole thing, the whole picture. Paul writes here in view of God's mercy. He's not talking generically about God's love or about Jesus dying, but taking the full view, the full width depth of God's overwhelming mercy. To do what? Paul tells us for what? To offer ourselves as living sacrifices. This is worship. Christian worship entails the complete giving of ourselves. We are all members of the body of Christ, but we don't all have the same function. We become living sacrifices when we find our place in the body. The church thrives as people find out how their unique talents, abilities, expertise, and their gifts fit into God's larger picture. So my question for you this morning, the question to reflect what does it mean to be a good steward? Is this. What does your church need? And this isn't just like here and now. This is more of a um, rhetorical, like at any point, in any place in your life, what does your church need? What is it missing? And how do you fit into that? Not how does someone else fit, not how does a board member fit, not how does a pastor, how do you fit? I've, I've seen a lot of, uh, I've had a lot of experiences in the church where there's someone who has really good vision. They, they spot me and they see something and they say, oh man, pastor, we need to find someone and get them involved to take care of this. And my first thought is, well, great, you, you've already seen it. So you're literally the best person to do something about it. When you see a need, the question isn't, what is else someone else going to do about it? But what are you going to do about it? How can you help with it? As we look, as we look at need and we pursue God's will, as we lead, lean into the Spirit's moving, the question then becomes, what do you have? What would it look like to you for you to offer yourself up God's kingdom and his purpose. What would it look like to follow the spirit of God and his leading? And this ultimately is stewardship. This is how we care for the body. It's not just about giving one little part of our life. It's about being living sacrifices and giving God our life back. As we have the call to stewardship, and may we follow the leading of Christ. May God give us the wisdom to know our place and give us the passion to follow his will. Father, this morning, as we come.
come and we gather as we think about stewardship. God, I pray that we would learn the importance of stewardship. That we'd learn the importance of caring for ourselves, our, our spiritual well-being, our mental well-being, our physical well-being. I pray, God, that we learn the importance of caring for our families and their well-being as well. And I pray, God, that as you've called the church and as your spirit works and moves breathes life into the church, I pray that we would learn and live what it means to be good stewards of the life that you've given us. I ask God that as we go now that you would continue to work and that you would move in our lives in the ways that only you can. We ask this in Jesus' name. Through the power of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. In closing, stand and receive this benediction from Ephesians chapter 3, 16 through 21. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray for you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, how high, and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is a work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Jesus Christ throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.